Injustice 2 is a fighting video game developed by Netherrealm Studios and published by Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment. It is the sequel to 2013's Injustice, Gods Among Us. The game was released in May 2017 for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Similar to the previous installment, a companion mobile app was released for iOS and Android devices. The core gameplay remains similar to its predecessor, albeit with minor adjustments to returning game mechanics. Injustice 2 introduces a new feature called the Gear System, a loot dropping system that rewards players with costume pieces and equipment that can be used to customize Chiracta's appearances and modify their abilities and stats. According to developers, the idea for implementing an RPG-style progression system into a fighting game had existed since before the fall of Midway Games, the original publisher for the Mortal Kombat series. Director Ed Boon also sought to incorporate gameplay mechanics used by multiplayer shooter games, such as personalization, character creation, loot, and leveling up, into the fighting game genre, which led to the development of the gear system. The game received positive reviews from critics, who praised its story, presentation, improved gameplay mechanics, abundance of in-game content, and character customization options, while criticizing its random loot and microtransaction systems. Equals equals gameplay equals equals. Injustice 2 retains numerous gameplay mechanics from Injustice, Gods Among Us, including environment interaction, stage transitions, clashes, and character traits. The trait system, like before, provides a temporary buff or ability that complements each character's playstyle. The super meter, which allows players to execute enhanced special moves and unlock powerful super moves when fully charged, also returns. Players can expend meter to perform new techniques, such as an evasive forward roll, which provides a way to overcome enemy keep-away tactics, or an air recovery, which lets characters escape an opponent's combo early. Most environmental attacks, which were completely unavoidable in the first Injustice game, can now be blocked. However, certain environmental attacks with large amounts of startup, such as throwing a car, will remain unblockable. Injustice 2 introduces a loot dropping system, known as the Gear System, which offers character specific costume pieces and equipment with status altering effects. The Gear System uses RPG like mechanics to reward players with experience and loot after every match. Every playable fighter is given four base stats strength, defense, health, and ability, the latter of which impacts special special attacks. As players collect experience points and subsequently level up, their Chiracta's base stats will increase. Players can enhance their base stats even further by equipping gear obtained through loot drops, which also lets players customize the look of their characters. Rarer gear can include one or more bonus augmentations, which range from new visual effects for special moves to higher yields of in-game currency or experience points. Players can receive additional bonuses by equipping their characters with all five pieces of a single gear set. Gear comes in three varieties, equipment, shaders, and abilities. Besides the random loot earned at the end of a fight, all three types of gear are available to purchase in loot crates, known as mother boxes, using in-game currency. Each character has five equipment slots for donning new costume pieces, which include their head, torso, arms, legs, and an accessory, two ability slots for equipping new or modified special attacks, and one shader slot for altering their color scheme. The game will also include five separate gear loadouts for each character, allowing players to switch between their setups at the beginning of each match. The game also includes a microtransaction system. Players can buy source crystals using real-world money to purchase cosmetic adjustments for fighters, such as premier skins and shaders, instead of waiting to obtain them through normal play. Source crystals can also be used to buy transform gear. Transform gear lets players apply the visuals of one piece of gear to another, allowing them to match their preferred stat modifiers with their preferred costume pieces. Lastly, once players have reached level 20 with at least one character, source crystals can be used to level up other characters to their maximum levels. Netherrealm representatives clarified that any purchases made with source crystals are strictly cosmetic and offer no gameplay advantages. In addition to the campaign, online, and arcade modes, Injustice 2 introduces a new multiverse mode. Similar to the Living Towers mode from Netherrealm's previous title, Mortal Kombat X, the multiverse allows players to travel through series of parallel worlds within the DC universe and battle against opponents with various handicaps, stipulations, and goals. Online multiplayer will feature the option to disable gear system upgrades and modifications, reducing all base stats to their default levels, turning any equipped gear into purely cosmetic items, and providing more balanced gameplay for competitive matches. 
players can also form online guilds with up to 50 other players. Guild members can collaborate to complete daily and weekly cooperative objectives to earn and share gear exclusive to guild gameplay and climb the worldwide leaderboards. Equals equals synopsis equals equals. Injustice 2 continues the storyline established in Injustice. Gods Among Us. Unlike the previous game, which centered on a multi-universe conflict, the plot for Injustice 2 takes place entirely within the alternate, dystopian universe. According to Injustice, Gods Among Us cinematic director Dominic Cianciolo, the story from the first installment provided a solid foundation for adapting the canonical histories of the game's newer cast, allowing the writers to fit their stories within the Injustice universe. The biggest challenge presented to the writers was extending the series narrative without repeating the core Batman vs. Super Man conflict. This led to the inclusion of Brainiac as the game's central antagonist, as there were few characters in the DC universe that could top Dictator Superman as a foe for Batman. Equals 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 plot equals equals equals. Five years after Superman's defeat, Batman and his collaborators attempt to piece the world back together. However, a new faction, the Society, composed of villains spearheaded by Gorilla Grodd, emerges and plans for world domination, with several of his allies either victims of or collaborators with Superman's failed regime. Batman is forced to create a new team to combat the society. He sends Black Canary, Green Arrow, and Harley Quinn to combat them in Gorilla City, where Dr. Fate warns Green Arrow and Black Canary of an incoming threat towards the planet. After defeating Grodd, the two are abducted by Brainiac, the true mastermind behind the society. Having previously collected and destroyed Krypton, he had intended to reclaim Superman, but became interested in adding Earth to his collection. After Brainiac takes over Batman's communications hub, Brother I, Batman searches for allies to combat him. Catwoman, Batman's double agent within the society, frees Harley from Gorilla City. Flash and a reformed Green Lantern reunite before joining Batman, who sends Hal to Atlantis to gain Aquaman's assistance. Aquaman refuses to cooperate at first, but relents after Brainiac attacks Atlantis. Meanwhile, Black Adam has found Kara Zor-El's disabled evacuation ship in space and brought her to Conduct, where he and Wonder Woman give partial truths about her cousin, leading her to become Supergirl, and plan to release their associates from prison to re-establish the regime. When they witness Brainiac's forces attacking Earth, they attempt to enact their plan. Desperate, Batman releases Superman from custody. Cyborg, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn return to the Batcave to free Brother Eye from Brainiac's control and coordinate civilian evacuation efforts. Wonder Woman takes Supergirl to Metropolis, and openly challenges Batman's plan. When she comes close to killing Cheetah and Harley Quinn, Supergirl stops her and heads to the Fortress of Solitude to confront Superman on the matter, learning the truth of her cousin's tyranny. With several of Earth's cities abducted, Brainiac prepares to eradicate the planet. The Alliance attempts to take on Brainiac's ship, but his shields are too strong and he seemingly kills Superman in the process. They concoct a plan to weaken Brainiac's shields by using Aquaman's trident as a conduit for the magic of the Rock of Eternity. Grodd pursues Aquaman and Black Adam with a brainwashed Black Canary, Green Arrow, and Blue Beetle. After Aquaman kills Grodd, the pair successfully weakens Brainiac's shields enough for Batman and Super girl to break in. The two are captured, but Batman is rescued by Superman. After they defeat a brainwashed firestorm and swamp thing, they are confronted by Dr. Fate, turned into Brainiac's servant by the Lords of Order. Fate is defeated and his helmet is destroyed, removing the Lord's influence. However, he is impaled and killed by Brainiac. They then incapacitate Brainiac, taking control of the ship. Superman manages to restore most of the cities back to their original locations. The heroes are divided over Brainiac's fate. Batman, Flash, Green Lantern, and Supergirl want to spare him in order to restore the lost cities. Superman, Aquaman, Black Adam, and Wonder Woman want to kill him to eliminate his potential threat and use his ship. Batman subdues Superman with a gold kryptonite-laden dagger and a battle ensues. Batman and Superman defeat each other's teammates before engaging in a final battle in the Batcave. The battle has two endings, depending on which side the player chooses. If Superman wins, he kills Brainiac, bonds with the ship and re-establishes the regime. He offers an imprisoned Supergirl the chance to join his army, claiming he restored the remaining cities and put Earth at peace. She refuses, and is horrified when she sees Batman under Superman's mind control. If Batman wins, he depowers Superman and imprisons him in the Phantom Zone. He decides to create a new Justice League with his allies and offers Supergirl a membership within it. Equals 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 characters equals equals equals. The base roster for Injustice 2 includes 29 playable characters, consisting of both new and returning heroes and villains. The game will also feature additional characters available as down 
downloadable content, DLC. According to senior marketing game manager Brian Goodman, the playable characters were decided upon by NetherRealm Studios in collaboration with DC Comics, similar to the previous title. The developers considered the Characters lore, personalities, abilities, popularity, participation in the story, and relationships with other characters during the roster selection process. Creative director Ed Boon stated that Injustice 2's roster would contain more relatively obscure characters, since Injustice, Gods Among Us had covered most of DC Comics' most notable figures. He teased the possibility of third-party DLC characters, which were well-received in Mortal Kombat X. Due to the success of Scorpion in the previous installment, who was the most downloaded DLC fighter, Boon also entertained the likelihood of Netherrealm including other Mortal Kombat characters as downloadable content, leading to the inclusion of Sub-Zero. New playable characters are listed in bold. Additionally, several characters are playable as premier skins, which transform characters from the existing roster into other DC Comics characters with unique voices and dialogue. A. Available as downloadable content. Equals equals development equals equals. Injustice 2 was announced by NetherRealm Studios and Warner Brothers. Interactive Entertainment on June 8, 2016. Following the release of Injustice, Gods Among Us, NetherRealm Studios sought to do something unexpected and long-term for its sequel, as well as give players a level of control that makes playing their games a truly personal experience. Ed Boon also wanted to infuse various gameplay mechanics used by recent multiplayer shooter games, such as personalization, character creation, loot, and leveling up, into the fighting game genre. According to producer Adam Urbano, the idea of creating a fighting game utilizing a role-playing game-like progression system had been floating around the studio since before the fall of Midway Games, the original publisher for the Mortal Kombat series. Due to the success of the original Injustice, which earned NetherRealm Studios the trust of Warner Brothers and DC Comics, the development team decided to pitch their progression concept for the sequel, which was approved, leading to the implementation of the gear system. The gear system was designed to encourage players to develop unique personal play styles, while consistently rewarding them for investing time into the game. According to Goodman, the developers wanted the gear system to cater to both the the casual and hardcore audiences. They hoped that hardcore players would appreciate the different mechanics offered by the system and create new strategies and fighting styles for each character, while casual players would enjoy the variety of visual customization options. NetherRealm also foresaw the potential issue with newer players being dominated by veteran players who have obtained rarer gear sets. To address this, the developers attempted to implement various solutions, such as giving players the option to disable stat modifiers during matches and the ability to buy rarer gear through the assorted tiers of mother boxes. A balanced team was also consulted during development to try to prevent players from clustering around a small number of optimal builds. NetherRealm Studios collaborated with DC Comics throughout Injustice 2's entire development process, including conceptualizing characters and determining the direction of the story. As with Injustice, Gods Among Us, NetherRealm was afforded a lot of freedom with DC Comics properties when designing characters. Lead designer John Edwards stated that all of their design ideas had to pass through DC Comics' approval process, though, the company had rarely rejected them. This allowed the developers to create a large variety of costume variations and visually distinct items inspired by decades of source material. It's a mutual respect, explained art director Steve Barron. They respect what we do, and we respect all their characters. We are fans of their characters and, I think, art-wise and design-wise, we put a lot of detail that hardcore fans will like. We tried to really honor every character. The online infrastructure for Injustice 2 utilizes the same rollback-based netcode used in Mortal Kombat X. An online multiplayer beta test for both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions was announced on January 19, 2017, which began soon afterwards on January 24 and lasted until February 21. The game's original soundtrack was composed primarily by Christopher Drake, with with additional compositions from Richard Carl, Dan Forden, and Dynamedian. Equals equals release equals equals. Injustice 2 released in North America on May 16, 2017, Australia on May 17, 2017, and the United Kingdom on May 19, 2017, for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Aside from the standard edition of the game, a digital deluxe edition and an ultimate edition were available for purchase. The digital deluxe edition included three DLC characters, the Power Girl Premier skin, and one exclusive of Gear Shader Pack, the Ultimate Edition included nine DLC characters, the Reverse Flash, Jon Stewart, and Power Girl Premier skins, and two exclusive Gear Shader Packs.
Pre-orders of the game featured Darkseid as a playable DLC fighter. On May 8, 2017, Warner Bros. Interactive Entertainment announced the Injustice 2 Championship Series, a global esports program. The series will offer amateur and professional players throughout North America, Europe, and Latin America a chance to compete in different programs for a portion of a $600,000 prize pool. These include the Injustice 2 Pro Series, an international tournament, the game's top hometown heroes tournament, set in the United States, the path to Pro Tournament, set in Europe, and the Liga Latina, set in Argentina, Chile, Mexico, and Peru. The top players from each program will qualify for the Championship Series Grand Finals. Equals 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 mobile version equals equals equals. Like its predecessor, a free-to-play mobile app based on Injustice 2 was released for iOS and Android devices on May 11, 2017. The app was soft-launched in the Philippines App Store in February 2017. It maintains several gameplay features from the original, including the swipe-based based fighting mechanics, card collection, and three-on-three -three battles, but introduces various changes to the game's overall formula. Players are now given the ability to move around the stage freely during combat, as well as use jumping and crouching attacks. The stamina management system returns, however, instead of each character receiving their own allotment of stamina, the player is given a single pool of stamina which depletes after every match. Fights also require higher levels of stamina than the previous game. The app includes login bonuses, daily objectives, which offer experience and coins, and achievements, which are long-term goals that reward players with premium gems and hero shards used for unlocking and leveling up characters. It also features game mechanics similar to those found in the console versions, such as ability and gear upgrades. The app includes a story mode, which will be released chapter by chapter in subsequent updates. Equals 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 downloadable content equals equals equals. According to Boone, Netherrealm Studios planned to take a more aggressive approach for downloadable content in Injustice 2 compared to their previous games. On May 5, 2017, Netherrealm Studios announced Fighter Pack 1, which includes three DLC characters, Red Hood, Starfire, and Mortal Kombat Sub-Zero. Fighter Pack 1 will be included in both the Digital Deluxe Edition and Ultimate Edition of the game. Equals equals reception equals 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 critical response equals equals equals. Injustice 2 received generally favorable reviews, according to Metacritic, which assigned aggregated scores of 87 and 88 for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions, respectively. Reviewers lauded Injustice 2's story and presentation. Eurogamer's Wesley Yinpool praised the game's narrative and visuals, describing them as impressive and a significant step up from Injustice, Gods Among Us. Yinpool commended the story mode on a technical level, praising the motion capture, action choreography, voice acting, and facial animations. Metro said it had probably the best single-player experience ever in a fighting game. Destructoid's Nick Valdez shared similar views, stating that the visuals were leagues above the first title. Valdez also complimented the game's improved writing and more engaging narrative. In contrast, while Game Revolution's James Kozenitis said the visuals were absolutely jaw-dropping and set a new high bar for the fighting game genre, he lambasted the story campaign, which he labeled as poorly written and contrived. GamePro called it a game for everyone, while Yahoo said, Injustice 2 is at once accessible and deep, a game easy to jump into but packed with subtleties begging for your time and attention. Reviewers also praised Injustice 2's improved gameplay mechanics and abundance of in-game content. Game Informer's Andrew Reiner praised the game's faster walk speed, the additions of the evasive roll and air recovery maneuvers, and the ability to block environmental attacks, stating that the game felt tighter as a whole and offers a higher level of strategy. These points of praise were mirrored by IGN Derry Husky, who remarked that Injustice 2 struck a fine balance between retaining the strengths of gods among us and making smart changes to improve mechanics. Husky applauded the incredible amount of content, declaring that hour for hour, Injustice the 2nd of May have more content for solo players than any fighting game ever released. Reiner also praised the amount of content, acknowledging its lengthy story-based campaign, great fighting experience, and, nearly endless supply of notable loot. Yinpool wrote that Netherrealm Studios once again proved it's the best in the business at that old chestnut, content. While the customization options offered by the gear system received praise, critics expressed frustration with receiving random, undesired gear through loot drops and the game's microtransaction system. On the other hand, Brown criticized the gear system's use of currency, 
particularly source crystals, saying that spending real money seemed to be a necessary evil for players to have complete control over their inventories. Kotaku's Mike Fahey described the ability to create custom versions of characters as quite satisfying, however, he found the gear system to be complicated and criticized the randomness in receiving desired costume pieces and equipment, uttering sometimes random chance really sucks. Videogamer.com's Alice Bell also called the microtransaction and loot systems needlessly complex, which require players players to keep track of several different types of currency. In contrast, Polygon's Michael McWhorter called the interface elegant, enjoying the simplicity of managing and selling of gear for each character. Equals 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 awards equals equals equals. In June 2016, Injustice 2 received Best of E3 2016 awards for Best Fighting Game from the Game Critics Awards, IGN. Game Informer, and Games Radar. Equals equals related media equals equals. During Netherrealm Studios Injustice 2 panel at San Diego Comic Con International on July 22, 2016, Boone announced a digital comic book series which will detail the backstory to the events of the game. The series is written by Tom Taylor, who had previously worked on the tie-in comic books for Injustice, Gods Among Us. Bruno Redondo is its lead artist, with contributing artwork from Juan Albaran, Daniel Semper, and Mike Miller. Beginning on April 11, 2017, the series was released in weekly chapters through various digital retailers, including Comixology, Google Playbooks, the Kindle Store, and DC Comics' own mobile app. Print versions became available for purchase on May 3, 2017, each containing multiple digital chapters. Equals equals notes equals 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 references equals 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 external links equals equals official website.